Aloha and welcome back to Live at the Legislature. It's time for our weekly Senate segment. I'm the Senate Communications Director, Jesse Broder Van Dyke, and our guest this week is Jarrett Keaho Kalole, the Senator for Kaneohe and Kailua and Chair of the Technology Committee. Thank you so much for getting up early to join us today. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, mental health care has been an issue in the news this week with the tragic incidents that happened in Diamond Head, and I know that you've been a leader in mental health care uh, for a while, and you introduced Senate Bill 2505, which will provide funds for the Department of Health to establish a continuum of stabilization beds statewide for non-forensic patients, which means patients who have not been arrested, with substance abuse or mental health disorders, or both, by repurposing unused state facilities. Can you tell us a little bit about the legislation? Yeah, thank you. So, um, well, what we've come to see uh, in the last several years with the homeless population and then also with uh, uh, the mental health challenges with the rest of the community is that accessing services is a real challenge uh, unless you've been unfortunately arrested or had some sort of interaction with the criminal justice system. You know, this example of last week was uh, tragic and uh, was one of an individual who just didn't uh, who didn't exhibit bad enough behavior for uh, our first responder systems to engage in a meaningful way with things like involuntary commitment uh, or, or some of our other programs. And so the reality is that uh, often if you have a mental health challenge or if you have a family member who has a severe or persistent mental health condition, it's very difficult to access services for folks who don't think that they're often sick uh, or for family members who don't know how or who to reach out to. So uh, over the last couple of years, we have been working with the Department of Health and with the partners in the mental health and homeless community to set up an alternate system of care, sort of a continuum of care uh, for folks outside of the criminal justice context. There's now a 24-hour uh, hotline uh, that members of the public, family, friends, or individuals themselves can call and get immediate access to mental health services. And uh, the bill that we're working on uh, partially uh, a lot state funds but also allows us to redirect Medicaid money a lot of these folks aren't insured but if we can get them in the system get them signed up for Medicaid uh, we have been able to uh, get an exemption from the federal government to allow uh, those monies to be utilized for th for stabilization uh, types of programming when people get um, committed mandatorily you know by the police they send them to the hospital and uh, provide 48 or 24 or 48 hours of mandatory commitment for folks who are having a mental health crisis event. Often what happens is they just get released right back out into the public. I have uh, Castle Hospital is located in my district in Kailua and uh, the police and, and the folks at the hospital have said we have folks who, who cycle in and out of that mandatory commitment program two, three times a month because there are no wraparound services to capture those individuals once they've had time to stabilize and, uh, and, and are ready to get some kind, of, some kind of ancillary help. So that's what we're trying to do here uh, with the bill. So what kind of steps do we need to take in order to help people who, who don't understand they need help or refuse help? Uh, so in particular with the bill, one of the, one of the things we've noticed is uh, we've revamped our first responder systems uh, to try and divert people out of jails and into treatment, mandatory commitment, things like law assisted, uh, law enforcement assisted diversion and community court are all opportunities for folks, particularly the chronic uh, homeless who have mental health conditions, to access services. But what we're finding is that once they get connected with the services, uh, sometimes there's a gap uh, in between when we get uh, and when we get in contact with them and when they get assessed and when we can actually get them into some sort of long-term stable treatment regime or even housing. And so what we're trying to do with this program is, is use some of our underutilized state resources just to provide stabilization beds for folks who need sometimes 10 days or two weeks to rest, to recover, and allow medical professionals to do, uh, you know, 
a really meaningful assessment. These are folks who have not often uh, have not committed any sort of crimes, and so are not are not afforded the opportunity to get that type of medical treatment in jail, which is not where we want them anyway. And so the whole idea is to pro leverage our resources, restructure the system to provide access to folks, try and get them off the street and into some sort of help long term. And you mentioned earlier a 24-hour crisis hotline, and this number can be used uh, both by family members who might know someone who's mentally ill, and I know a lot of times it's a challenge, people don't know where to turn. So I'll just uh, read the number for everyone at home. It's 1-800-753-6879. Once again, that's 1-800-753-6879. And what sort of uh, assistance can people expect when they call in? Uh, well, number one, they'll get somebody on the other end of the line. You know. I in my district, unfortunately, I know some of the real chronic, uh, chronically homeless individuals mm -hmm. because the homeless population is getting younger. And uh, you never know when people in the general public or when family members might be able to, to reach out to somebody who's in crisis like that and get them to agree to receive some sort of help. You just never know. That's why we've built out a lot of these systems, just mm -hmm. to provide access points for people who need help right in the moment when mm -hmm. they need it, whether it's just a rainy, cold day and they want, you know, they want a bed and mm -hmm. something to eat. Every time someone who's on the street or who has a mental health condition asks for help, Help. There should be some access point uh, to get them some services because uh, even if it costs a little bit of money on the front end, we're we are throwing away millions of dollars on the back end when they call the ambulance, sap our mm -hmm. our police and our fire and our EMS and our emergency rooms uh, for treatable conditions or sometimes just for you know a place out of the rain. Right. And so that's the beginning of that sort of continuum of care we're talking about. Sometimes they need two weeks mm -hmm. uh, in the hospital. They get all their other um, uh, health conditions taken care of before we can get them in a program. Uh, sometimes it's quick and then we can get them into some sort of treatment. But the whole idea is providing those access points because it shouldn't be fire or police or EMS that are being the social workers for the homeless population and, and everyone else in the, in the community who have mental health conditions but are not committing crimes. And as expensive as it may be to give people 10 days or two weeks of help, it's much more expensive to send them to the emergency room over and over again and a burden on our first responders. Absolutely, the you know Castle Hospital is is an emergency room, the only emergency room access point on the windward side of Oahu. Queens is our major trauma center in the state of Hawaii, and I've I've gone through ride-alongs with uh, first responders, EMS. I've been through tours of the the hospital, and to have the entire ER wing uh, full with people who are homeless or mentally ill that have minor conditions is not good for our you know the rest of our public health system when we have you know tragedies that can occur at any point and folks who are really in life and death situations that might not be able to utilize the ER uh, because it's full of folks who have treatable conditions. Well thank you so much for your efforts on this difficult issue Senator and we'll, we'll keep in touch with you as things develop. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us and on a lighter note I'd just like to point out that this may be the tallest episode of Live at the Legislature ever 263 gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you again next week, uh, Tuesday mornings, 8.30 a.m. right here on Olelo. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol. So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.